Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday morning and today we have another special, I guess it's mechanical keyboard related thing that we're gonna review straightforwardly and honestly. And this is the, I guess you've already seen it in the title. This is the Magic Force, the Keyson Magic Force Crystal 21 key mechanical number pad. Look how cool and cute that thing is. It does come with a detachable micro USB cable. So it's detachable. I'm just gonna show the product like this. This was about $33 when we picked it up. Links are down below if you wanna check it out. Prices may vary depending on where you are and what time you bought it. So if you have a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard, 60%, 65%, 40%, or whatever small size, you don't have a number pad. And if you do miss that number pad and you want one, you can always get yourself one like this, a separate numpad for your number entry and maybe gaming purposes. So let's talk about some number entry and what's really good and what's not good. So when you get a full size keyboard, your number pad is usually on the right side of the keyboard. And if you're right handed, you're using your mouse in that area of your number pad and your number pad's gonna get in the way or your keyboard's gonna get in the way and your arms all the way outstretched over there, which is not ergonomic and not good for you because your shoulders are in protraction all the time, stretching those muscles shortening your front ones, lengthening the long ones, so not an ideal position. And that is where the smaller keyboards come in. I'm sure a lot of you have a smaller mechanical keyboard, and if not, you've probably seen a ton of the 60% keyboards going laying around out there and everybody's using the Ann Pro 2 or the Ducky 1 2 Mini, things like that. 60% keyboards are becoming the rage. So full size keyboard, not the best. So we buy a number pad. Where are we gonna put the number pad? The ideal position to put your number pad would be on the left side of the keyboard. Why, you ask? Well, if you're doing a number entry job on let's say an Excel spreadsheet, your left hand is going to be on the number pad typing numbers and your right hand can either be on the mouse or the arrow cluster. And that way you can get all your work done without lifting up your hands at all. Talk about productivity, speed, and efficiency all in the same package. However, if you have the number pad on the full size keyboard, you're moving to the arrows, moving back to the numbers, moving back to the arrows, and repeating that over and over again. But with that being said, not everybody wants or needs a separate number pad. It is honestly really just extra and it's up to you. I had the number pad on my desk for about a week and I didn't touch it at all. I'm just so used to reaching up to my number row. Then that's because I'm not doing number entry. I'm only typing things like numbers in email addresses, my phone number, my apartment number. So things like that, that are really small and not really worth having a number pad for. I even found that when I was adding things on the calculator, I was still using that same number row and making a conscious effort to be like, oh, I'm adding something. Let me go to the number pad. So fancy. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about this specific number pads because this is a review, right? So we talked before, it does have a detachable micro USB port right here in the back. And I really like the positioning of it just straight in the middle not too close to the, the floor. It's just nice because then you can use pretty much any micro USB cord without really having to worry about it being lifted off of the table. As you can see from the back, it does have four rubber feet, but no adjustable kickstand. I mean, honestly, do you even need an adjustable kickstand on this? It has a clear plastic bottom and that's why it's called the crystal. It does have a natural incline to it already. So you really don't need a kickstand and it is very comfortable to type on. It has the ABS double shot keycaps. Very nice. It does have backlight and that is white only. Comes with three pre-programmed lighting effects. One is just the static white color. Two is the breathing. Three is the reactive 
lighting so when you it's all off until you press something and then that light turns on and there are different levels of brightness that you can go from other things we've got this with the gateron red switches and that is a linear switch here's some sound tests So the sounds you're hearing are from it bottoming out. If you press super lightly and don't bottom out, it is a really quiet switch. However, I think that's a terrible choice for a number pad and here's why. With linear switches, you don't really feel where it actuates or feel where it registers. So I found myself missing key presses or key pressing too often that is double typing a seven for example so not the best especially if you're if you have 10 key experience which means that you're it's like touch typing for a number pad you're not looking at the number pad you're just entering numbers probably having that tactile feel to tell your hand oh let's move on to the next number would be great but it does sound good with linears no complaints there the larger keys have cherry st style stabilizers. So the larger keys here are the plus key, the enter key, and zero. And they all have pretty nice stabilizers. There is no rattle. They sound just as good as the keys without stabilizers. There's different switch options that you can get with this number pad. There's either Cherry MX or Gateron or Gateron, however you pronounce it. There's black switches, red, brown, blue, white, clear, and green. Not all of those are available in Cherry MX and not all of those are available in Gateron. It's sort of what belongs in each brand specifically. So the lighting options are either white like this one or an ice blue which is like a very light blue plus a white sort of combined kind of things. And the keycap options are ABS double shot or PBT die subbed. So with the PBT keycaps you're not likely to get any backlight. Some of the downsides with this numpad is that it's not programmable. When you buy a number pad not everybody wants to use their number pad as a number pad. Some people want to use them as a macro pad. So if you can program your number pad, you can install like 21 different macros in it and use it sort of like an Elgato Stream Deck or use it like the extra macro keys on the left side of a Corsair keyboard like that and that way you can just reach up with your left hand real quick and press some macros, open up some programs, do really cool things, but this one doesn't have that. There are other number pads that are programmable. We'll link you down below to our best number pads of 2020 blog post where we did do a rundown of some of the best number pads, some programmable and some not. This one's not, unfortunately. It's very fun to have on my desk. It looks super cool with my white mouse on the right, white number pad on the left, but I personally have no use for it and almost never touch it. But if you do a lot of number entry and that's the reason you're using a full-size keyboard and you want to downsize to a smaller keyboard, this is a great option, so go for it. If you're doing a lot of math stuff, number entry stuff, great option. I'll go with different switches though. Browns, not reds. If you're liking the video so far, press that like button if you've gotten any value out of this video. And we're going to link you to all of our reviews here on Switch and Click here. And then our TKL Friday series here where we review only TKL mechanical keyboards because that's my favorite layout so far. There's a ton of episodes, so check that out. Binge watch them. Do what you please. Subscribe here if you want to, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>